okay and the wind has actually picked up more than I'm comfortable with. So I am going to show you the repacking procedure now and uh, we'll get footage of the flight later when the wind gets a little better. So I'm going to set the camera down and just let it play while I repack the parachute so you can see what that's like. Hopefully you can pick that all up. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out, something I do. I talked about putting the uh, stuff sack and the uh, line sock covers in this saddle bag. These uh, line sock holders have a little uh, loop and clip so that they can clip on here to the frame and it holds them up uh, so they don't slide down the, the cables here. Keeps them in place. I actually use those to also keep the saddlebag in place to keep it from, otherwise it would slide all the way over here and I think it would block a little airflow to the engine. I mean, my big head blocks enough airflow, we don't need another uh, blockage to the uh, air of airflow to the engine. So I use this little loop and clip here to uh, keep my saddlebag in place. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, now we'll go back to packing up. first line sock out here. Grab that loop I was talking about around the frame here. Loop bar. That keeps that in place. Let's go ahead and that there and then basically I just start folding it towards the middle in halves so I take this half pull it, over so I pull it to just beyond the middle I use my jacket hold it down so Top side in the same way.
Okay, so the first half is folded up. I'm gonna move you a little bit closer so you can see me fold up. So you can see me fold up the other half. That wind really wants to pick up my chute and pull it away when I'm not looking. I'm gonna set my helmet down right there to uh, keep that from happening. Get the other sock holder, put it on this side. It uh, wraps around both cables and the brake lines at the top. And at the bottom, just got to grab all the lines and make sure there's They're bunched together enough where you can zip it up over them. Sorry, I'm trying to find technical terms and I, I have none. Yeah, and it really doesn't take much wind at all to start picking the chute up and moving it around. Even in the lightest of wind, it can be a little problematic to put away. Again, just take that, throw it in there. Any brake lines that may be still sticking out, you just toss them in. And then we'll just start folding again. I have a Mustang 420. I don't know if that shows up on the camera or not. That's a parachute I have. I try to keep my folds as square and rectangular as possible. Our friends out there with autism or Asperger's will find this part truly rewarding. Make as neat a fold as they can. I'm probably overly fussy about this. A lot of guys just stuff it in and they say it's fine and it probably is but I get a lot of exercise walking around and around this parachute so it works for me works to be a little fussy we do our last fold here
keep hitting the buttons. The last thing I do here is take the uh, stuff sack out. And we basically, see which way I want to orient this, this way. You basically lay the, um, the bag on top of the parachute right there, like that. Let me get over here so the sun's not glaring. So you lay it across the top here, and uh, that basically tells you two things. Tells you where you need to make your folds to make it fit in the bag, and you also kneel on top of that to make the fold. So you kneel there, and then you reach out and you pull the parachute in and fold it. So that also protects the parachute from your knees, your shoes, and whatever else, boots, spurs whatever else you got. So I'm gonna set the camera back down so you can watch the magnificent folding process. I can do it without stopping recording again. Like I said, you basically kneel down on top of this, go up here to the edge of the bag, try to smooth it out as you go, it gets all the air out. Grab a handful of parachute and pull. Use that bag as a guide on how big to make these folds. My parachute's small enough that it only takes three folds. Try to get all the air out. Move back off the bag and just slide it out. Go back up on top of the parachute. And I usually start at the corner. I pull one corner up, slide the back over that corner, get one corner stuffed in. And then I grab the other corner, pull it up. the bag that way. Then when it's mostly in there, you can just stand it up. Shake it all down. Make sure all the lines are inside and out of the way of the zippers. This side I leave out because it's going to wrap around underneath the uh, cart here. So I leave it out. Lift the bag up just a little bit to keep the parachute from escaping. And I pull the uh, bag around under here. reposition the camera so you get a little bit better view. Boy, it is a beautiful day out here today. 
every day at the airport it's a beautiful day some people say well Scott you're a sissy look that's not much wind well the wind was forecast to be zero and pick up so it's uh, not zero and it's only going to pick up so I am choosing to exercise my discretion as pilot in command all right See if we can get the rest of this comedy hour here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the put the parachute on the cart here. So this this side's gonna wrap around underneath the frame, away from the propeller. What I do set the bag up here on the wheel. This sock is almost completely inside, so I leave the bag open just a little bit. Step the sock in. Nicely. Try to run it down the side as much as I can. Slipping up the bag, watching out for your, your lines. Okay, and then I snap this side. This side's cinched all the way up. There's a little movable strap here that, with a buckle on it. I have that one all the way up. I put that side on first. And I grab the opposing side line sock. Set the parachute on this little reinforcement bar here. Take the sock and pull out as much as you need to um, wrap around this. I don't know what this is, a lift tube, cross brace, something. It appears to be some sort of aircraft part. So I wrap it around there about two times, and then take the strap from the bag. It around that. Keep it cinched tight. And generally, I went the wrong way. I'm going to go the other way, folks. Uh, I'm not in Australia. I got to do it this time. That's all. So here we go again. Wrap it around twice. It has to do with the way the strap lines up, the way it snaps into the buckle. Set around two. That's on there nice and tight. Let's discuss what we've done here, shall we? You got one buckle there, just looped over. Other buckle there, looped around three times. The uh, line sock and the shrouds looped around two times. That keeps this sock here nice and tight. Wraps around underneath there, well away from the propeller. And away from the muffler, which gets really hot. Hot enough that it melted my other saddlebag. Ask me how I know that. Okay, so that's it for setting up and uh, putting away the powered parachute. Next, I'll show you what a flight is like. Oh, I guess I can go over a couple more of the pre-flight deals. So that's my handheld radio. My helmet will <coughs> plug into that. Um, here's a holder for my phone where I have some uh, aviation apps on it so I can keep that in uh, close proximity. And of course my $10 million fuel quantity indicator here. Yes, it's a mirror, but it's a $10 million mirror and I'll sell you one. So really
loose and check the fuel quantity prior to flight. It's uh, basically a visual gauge. And uh, yeah, the other parts of pre-flight is basically just to walk around and check all the nuts and bolts and you know make sure everything's working right. Nothing's coming off. I usually um, rock it back on its prop wearing like that and I walk around and check all the connections as much as I can like underneath and you know fuel lines check this torque up here for play and all that good stuff so yep that's it for pre-flight and setup and uh, next we'll show you a flight so I know at least one person who would love to see how this is put away so uh, I'm going to show you that if and I can. Hopefully this all shows up on the camera. We'll try. So basically what I do is just pull it into the uh, airport in a box here and uh, strap it down. There's no graceful way to do it. Thankfully, whoever built this trailer put these little blocks in. I just moved this one back a little bit, so because my power parachute wasn't as long as, as his. So I know phrasing. All right, put the tire bridle on this side. Tire bridle on. I think that's what they call. They look kind of like a horse's bridle. So, being as I live out here in farm country, that's what I call it. ratchet strap around the front. These are all ratchet straps. Make sure it's held down good and tight. Because we all know how I drive. We had one major automobile crash and one major airplane crash. So that's why I always put at the end of these videos, Crash Productions. And like I say, I crash better than anyone I know. And I learn slower than anyone I know. Because I'm still driving and flying after, even after crashing. Seatbelt on over all this stuff to hold it in place. That's it. It's ready to go. Let me uh, close these doors up and uh, we can get this show on the road. Step. Take down the windsock. I know a lot of people are going to see this video and say, oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. No, not right now. Like I said, it was forecast to be zero wind. 
and pick up rapidly today. And we don't have zero wind. And um, there we go. Wind sock store stowed in the wind sock stowage thingamabob. So yeah, a lot of guys will say, oh yeah, you should have just gone and flew. That's perfect weather. Yeah, but it changes quick out here. New Jerusalem Airport. We basically exist in an eddy uh, of, you know, of a current of air. I don't know if you can see out there, but right out that direction, if you can see two peaks, that's Mount Diablo. Just to the left of that, it's going to be the Altamont Pass where there's a bunch of windmills. And the windmills are there for a reason, because it's windy. So we get breezes through that Altamont Pass, come through quite quickly, head straight out the valley that way, and then they loop around this way on the east side of, it'd be the central part of the valley, but the east side of this area. It's way, way, way out there. We have the Sierra Nevadas. So these winds come out there and they, they sweep around and basically this is in a current of air. But when the winds pick up and get stronger, they start spilling in this way. And uh, these, this nice little eddy of calm air turns into an eddy of air blowing every which way. <laughs> so I just have decided, you know, I haven't flown as long as some guys. I've only flown like 26 years or so, but I've decided that, uh, you know, there's so many good days to fly. I don't want to go up there and fly right now and it's nice and then I come down and land and it's really windy and I'm struggling to put my parachute away and it becomes a, an unfun day. So I'll just fly on another day when it's going to be calm all morning. So that's Stinny Marat tune. Get this thing all closed up. Pick up the little ramp here. Oh, pick up the big ramp. Not before getting my padlocks out of here. Need the padlocks. Okay. Pick up the big ramp. Put that on. Put that on. Give me two hands for my putting the locks on. Be right back. Okay, well, I hope you guys, at least one or two of you, found that mildly interesting and or entertaining. That's basically the setup and teardown process. And uh, I'll edit in a flight as well. Even though I didn't fly this morning, I'll edit a flight in. That's basically the process. Come out here, set up. Well, come out here, check the wind. Set up, check the wind and then go fly. Um, there's a concept in flying things with strings, string wings, powered parachutes, powered paragliders, called uh, para-waiting. And that's exactly what we're doing today, is para-waiting. And that's okay. Just makes you enjoy the flight when you actually get to take it. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. We'll catch you later.